So I first want to say thank you on behalf of RAC for participating in our interview. My name is Shonda Evans, and I lead the education program at RAC. Great. Thanks, Shonda. Mario? And I'm Mario Mesquita. I'm the manager of advocacy and engagement here at RAC as well. Terrific. The two of us will, will be... We'll be asking you some questions today. Great. Um, yeah, so I, I wrote it out so that it's easier for me to uh, make sure I'm, I'm clear when I'm asking. Um, I work closely with programs throughout the organization implementing community engagement and processes. Embedded in our strategic framework, uh, we address equity, diversity, access, and inclusion in our schools. So we implement our racial equity lens as our tool to lean into framing arts education and access for everyone. So it's very important to us, close to our hearts. Um, I was hoping today if you could share with us why arts education has been centered in your advocacy calling card in Congress. Well, well, thank you for the, the question, but also thank you for the opportunity to, to be with you, albeit virtually. I look forward to the days when we can, can meet in person again. Um, mm -hmm. Arts education ha has been important to me as a policymaker, but I'll start by saying that when, uh, when I was growing up, I had arts in my life because my mother was a painter and a piano teacher, and we had arts at our schools. And then when I became a parent, I was the parent who was up at the school saying, why is there no band and where's the music teacher and where's the fine arts teacher and where's the orchestra? And uh, so I became a, a, a parent volunteer and trying to fill some of those gaps because I know what a difference it makes for students to have arts education and arts in their lives. And that's true regardless of what path they take in life. It's beneficial for them. Uh, it helps students grow and learn in important ways when they're exposed to the arts. So one of the reasons I ran for Congress was because when I was not only a, a parent volunteer in, in public schools, but also serving on, on, on a, a nonprofit boards in, in, in the arts and in education, uh, then in the legislature, I realized that so many of the decisions that were being made in our schools, including, well, of course, funding cuts uh, from starting with Measure 5, but ongoing funding cuts, oftentimes I would see that the first thing cut would be the arts. Last thing added back in would be the arts. Mm -hmm. And it is such an important part of well-rounded education a lot of the decisions were being driven by federal policy, particularly No Child Left Behind, mm -hmm. uh, which put way too much emphasis on test scores. Um, in, in areas that were tested, those got the focus and other things were cut. So I, I came to Congress with a, a goal of putting more focus on well-rounded education, getting rid of No Child Left Behind and making sure that arts are available to everyone because we know you talked about equity, we know mm. the equitable issues and the and the gaps. Um, students whose parents have resources, they will have arts. They'll have private lessons, or they'll have vacations, and go to museums and things that that uh, other students are not gaining those those positive experiences. So I'm really excited about uh, the Arts Education for All Act which I have introduced, and we had a kickoff. We now have more than 300. Uh, individuals and organizations supporting it. And it was just recently introduced to really send that message that um, arts education is important, but it's important for everyone. So mm -hmm. let's close those equity gaps. I hear you. I just wanted to um, allow my my team here to introduce themselves because we dive right into talking with you because we're excited. So if everyone could just uh, turn their, unmute themselves briefly and just shout out your name, um, I'm sure a lot of you have already met the Congresswoman, but it's always nice to. Oh, to I just put again. on the gal review and there's so many more of you here. That's wonderful. <laughs> there we go. Friendly faces. So, Madison, you want to start our round robin really quick? You bet. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Madison Cario. I am the executive director of the Regional Arts and Culture Council, and it's a pleasure to see you again. Nice to see you as well, Madison. Uh, thank you. And um, I'm going to turn it over, and I do have to jump in another meeting, but I just wanted to welcome you and say thank you for your work um, with arts education. Thanks, Madison. Good to see you. Natalie's from my team. Uh, Natalie's my communications director. She's she's with us too. Cool. 
Cool. Welcome, Natalie. Uh, I'll speak if, and you can't, I'm behind the mask. Um, <laughs> good morning, um, Representative Bonamici. My name is Carol Tatch. I am currently the Director of Philanthropic <coughs> Innovation uh, here at the Regional Arts and Culture Council. And um, you are aware of Madison Cario's imminent departure from RAC. I know, I'd heard that. Big shoes to fill, indeed. Extremely big. Luckily, I have big feet, and I will be having <laughs> a leadership position um, with Delphi um, here at the organization. And we're, we're looking forward to the opportunities to, to not just fill those, that, that, that footprint, but create a new design. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Thank welcome. You so much. I'll pass my introduction on to Helen. There you go. Good morning, everybody. Helen Del Toso. I use she, her, hers pronouns. Uh, I direct the grant program here at RAC. And um, thank you for an opportunity uh, to listen to this conversation. I appreciate it. Thank you, Helen. I pass to Della Ray. Hey. Thank you, Helen. Good morning, everyone. Um, really nice to meet you and to be in this space with all of you. And uh, my name is Della Ray, she, her pronouns, and I direct people operations and IT for Regional Arts and Culture Council. Nice to meet you. Wonderful. You as well, Della Ray. Good morning. Nice to see you again. I'm Kristen Calhoun. I'm the director of the public art program. I'm comfortable with she or they pronouns. Uh, it's it's Good to see you again. Nice to see you as well, Kristen. Great. All right, I'll go in. I think I have one or two more questions and I'm gonna pass my baton to Mario. So I'm personally particularly really interested in the inclusion of our at-risk and detained youth within uh, the framework of arts education. My, my background has a little bit of criminal justice injustice. To, so for me, this holds a very special place. Um, this year, I'm proud to say that RAC is collaborating with trauma-informed Oregon, and we're offering a four-part workshop series to our arts educators, and we're going to be starting number three in March. So we're really excited to offer that to folks. And we know that the arts can provide that hope, help folks heal, foster recovery, and move forward through trauma. So with so much injustice and inequity within our current systems, how impactful do you think this will be if those institutions are not fundamentally restructured. Well, thank you for that great question and thank you for your work and, and the awareness about uh, the, the healing power of the arts. And we included um, youth and others in the criminal justice system, at-risk youth uh, in, in our meaning of arts education for all. I have seen uh, and spoken with um, the people who run the program, for example, through the National Endowment for the Arts for veterans who have, are coping with PTSD and how the arts help them heal and tell stories uh, that, that make a difference in their lives. I have, on our kickoff, I heard a story of Maite, a high school student who uh, works with Play It Forward um, and has, because of the, the work of Play It Forward, she has a piano and has been able to take piano lessons. She lost, she and her family lost family members during the pandemic. And they told a story about how the arts have helped them heal and bring them together. And I really do see the potential and the opportunity for that, uh, not only story, storytelling, but creative expression and, and for, for people to help them uh, if they're in a reentry program and transitioning into society to be able to, uh, to express themselves uh, and be more successful. Um, I have seen uh, what, what the arts can do to help people show individuality and creative ideas, but also the brain research is there that arts education helps with both parts of the brain, creativity, judgment. Um, and so whenever we are able to help uh, educate people in a way that makes them fuller, more productive citizens, then that is a, a positive. So I see a, a, a tremendous, tremendous amount of potential and you know, I, I see it analogous to the, the, the opportunity for students to show some individuality. Mm -hmm. um, and in the days when our schools were focused on test scores and everybody was on the same page and uh, teachers were teaching to get students to get good test scores, you didn't see the joy of learning and the joy of 
you know, th- I'm, I'm a unique individual and I have something to offer and I can show that through creative expression. So that is a skill that will help everyone, mm-hmm. and particularly people who have been left behind uh, a lot in society. And we know that the, the, the pandemic, for example, is dis- climate change disproportionately affected BIPOC communities, communities of color, and making sure that arts for education for everyone really means everyone. So yeah. the equity piece is a big part of this. Um, again, trying to close those gaps. Um, I chair the Civil Rights and Human Services Subcommittee and the Committee on Education and, and Labor, and that is our focus, is really uh, closing closing the opportunity gaps and, and making sure that everyone has the the, the tremendous benefits that come from our education. Mm-hmm. That seems like such a natural fit to be on both of those committees to combine that work. So we really appreciate that. I'm going to hand the baton to Mario. Thank you, Congresswoman. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Shanda. Thank you. Um, so as the Regional Arts and Culture Agency, we not only support the city of Portland, but of course also the Tri-County region as well acting as a connector between our creative communities and opportunities for expression. So we also are very much, we know and understand the importance of arts education. uh, And we also want to recognize that support is not universal in our communities. So having this in mind, how do you think that RAC can can be a partner in your efforts to increase access to and for engagement with the arts? Thank you, Mario. And and I think a lot of it has to do with um, sending the message and helping to tell the story about not just the importance of arts education, but the importance of arts in our our communities, in our society, um, in democracy. Um, The arts have a tremendous potential to bring people together and to help people understand different perspectives. I mean, I learned about the labor movement from looking at the Diego Rivera murals painted in the Detroit Institute of Arts, for example. There's a tremendous educational opportunity. Uh, It's also a pretty big part of our economy uh, with, with, uh, and, and again, disproportionately hit during the pandemic, any sort of live performance or museums and, and, and places uh, really hard hit. And we've been trying to make sure that they're not left behind as we're, as we're in, in the recovery, but really sending the message of the benefits, not just of arts education, but of arts. And I know we've had conversations during some of the economic recovery when people said, why do we need to focus on the arts? And uh, look Look at all the other businesses that are struggling during the, the pandemic. And these are probably people who are getting through the pandemic by, by listening to music and watching films and playing games, all designed by artists without recognizing that uh, the, the artists create uh, a, a lot of what we use and and uh, a lot of what helps us get through hard times. So it's the economic impact as well uh, of the arts and culture sectors, as well as the importance of our edu- education. So telling the stories, you know, I found as a policymaker, when we talk about policy in the abstract, it's not nearly as compelling as when we hear stories about how the arts affect people's lives. And I mentioned the story of um, Maite, um, whose whose piano not not only inspired her but is helping her family as well. Um, I have I, I sometimes tell a story about how I visited a a STEAM school. You know, STEAM is the I, I serve on the science committee, and people are always talking about STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, which of course are important, but but they're not the only path, and and they are enriched by integration of the arts. So there's a STEAM school in Hillsboro Elementary School. And I um, several years ago, the then chair of the National Endowment for the Arts was visiting Oregon, and we went to visit Potom Elementary. And we watched, uh, there were two girls in sixth grade, and they stood in front of um, the chair of the National Endowment for the Arts and their representative in Congress and a bunch of other grown-ups, which had been so intimidating to me when I was in sixth grade. And they explained how they made a stop motion animation film uh, to teach about cell division. So my, the, the point is that not only did they, they didn't just read about cell division and understand it themselves, they were able to find a creative way to convey to others the lesson they had learned and they were able to explain it. 
So when when you look at the sort of holistic benefits that come from from arts education, uh, that's a, a long way to answer your question. But telling those stories about the benefits really helps, rather than speaking about you know arts arts and arts education are good uh, in the abstract. No, I think this is actually a perfect segue, uh, especially uh, it's talking about STEAM as well, because we know a well-rounded arts education, one that includes STEAM with the A. Uh, uh, actually enables economies to flourish and grow. And because Absolutely. we have creative and innovative entrepreneurial minds at the helm, how do you see then the Creative Economy Re- Revitalization Act fitting into the priorities for jobs and the economy here in the future of Oregon? Sure. And, and I'm really excited about the um, Creative Economy Revitalization Act, uh, which my colleague Ledger Fernandez, Teresa Ledger Fernandez, has recently introduced. Uh, because we know creative workers were particularly hard hit during the pandemic. And again, these are it's an important part of, of our economy, an important part of our community. So just making sure that our, you know, our workforce programs understand uh, that, that creative work is important and also having the sort of the recognition of the importance of public art. As I look at your beautiful mural behind you, <laughs> I, I was recently... Uh, Uh, at Timberline Lodge. And if you you want some inspiration about where investment made a difference to the creative community, uh, take another look at the amazing art from the the Works Project Administration in the 30s. And there was a recognition at the time that, yes, we need, this is an important part of our economy. We need to make sure that they can, uh, artists can thrive. So there's definitely a place for uh, for that piece of legislation as a companion to the arts education for all, uh, just to make sure that we're sending that message that uh, the arts are, arts are important. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I want to pass the baton now to Carol for closing um, and just share a little bit. So thank you so much. We appreciate this. Thank you, Natalie, for making this work. Um, looking forward to the votes this afternoon, of course. Um, but this is this is something Iraq is um, really excited about as a community here in Oregon, and um, we'll keep sending you those stories because they keep coming thank in, you. and we love sharing. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, John. Carol, we can't hear you. That is very true. So I will start again. Um, In closing, I would just love to say uh, that the honor is ours for you having allotted this time to us today. Um, We are looking forward to the opportunity that RAC has to lean into this process and to support um, all of the different pieces that are coming through that that just show that art and um, creative um, excellence exists and are needed in order for us to recover in the way that we need to. Um, in a way that brings the entire communities that we live in forward. Um, Your words are balm to our ears, of course, because we are deep in this work and we're in the struggle and to know that we have allies and co-conspirators at such high levels um, are are how we can continue the work that we do. So we um, enjoy the partnership, look forward to continuing opportunities to be with each other and simply thank you. Likewise. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for all you're doing in the community. Look forward to the ongoing partnership and hopeful uh, that we can get together in person someday soon. So thank you again for the opportunity. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Natalie, too. Thank Thank you. you. Bye-bye.